Our Miami Marlins have made it to the NLCS, and we've got the Philadelphia Phillies coming to town for games one and two. They are the only team standing in the way of a World Series appearance here in year number four of the series. In the last episode, we wrapped up the NLDS, taking two games at home against the Atlanta Braves, who had the best record in baseball, but guess what? That ain't stopping us. We took both games three and four, by just one run apiece, four to three and five to four. If those one run deficits are flip-flopped, we're out of the playoffs, but now we're in the NLCS. The third game of the series, we won four to three. We kind of had control for most of the game. Edward Cabrera had a great start before getting injured. Luckily, he's gonna be all good. And then in game four, Michael Harris had a big homer for the Braves, but Jazz Chisholm answered right back with a three-run blast in the following inning. Sandy Alcantara really struggled, but the bullpen was top-notch, and Jazz Chisholm hit a walk-off single to finish off the job in the bottom of the ninth inning for us to win the series, despite the fact that the Braves were the best team in baseball this year. Atlanta consistently over the last five years has had good records, and they can't make it out of the first round. So Luis Robert is back. Ryan Poles will be removed from the playoff roster. I'm really excited to have Robert back in the lineup. He's missed the past couple of months with an injury, and it's good to have him fully healthy. And now the entire roster, other than Jordan Hicks, who suffered a season-ending injury back in early May, everybody else is healthy for the first time really all year. We have not been this healthy in a while, and I feel like the team has gotten hot at the right time, especially the pitching. I think the pitching is the weaker area of this team, but through the playoffs, our pitching has been our strongest asset. The offense has been inconsistent, but the pitching has been phenomenal. Let's take a look at our opponent here, the Philadelphia Phillies, who are a very interesting team because they only won 84 games. They got the last wild card spot because of a tiebreaker with the Mets. And they have made it through the playoffs without probably their best player, Juan Soto, who tore his ACL back in July. The Phillies have gone on this run without Juan Soto, and because of that, I don't think you can take these guys lightly. This is along with the fact that the Phillies have been there, done that, multiple times over the last few years. They've been a highly seeded team who's been able to make far playoff runs, and this year appears to be no different. Part of the reason why I liked our matchup with the Braves, even though they're a better team than us, is that we dominated the Braves head-to-head -head this year. Well, the Phillies can say the same about us. We swept them early in the year, but in the other three series, we lost all of them, only winning one game, going a combined 3-10 and ten in the final three series against the Phillies, 6-10 and ten overall. The Phillies have our number throughout the year, and I'm a little bit concerned that that could be an issue, just as it was with Atlanta in this series against us. So I'm really curious to see how this goes. Two underdogs, two teams who you did not expect to be here in the NLCS. The Braves were the best team in the NL East all year, yet it's second and third place meeting up for a seven-game series to see who makes it to the World Series. The Marlins just beat the Braves in four, while the Phillies just beat the World Series defending champion Chicago Cubs in four games as well. The Marlins may be a little bit better than the Phillies, but as we know, on paper does not matter in the MLB playoffs as seen by both of these teams' previous playoff series. The Marlins have Luis Robert back in the lineup and they've got Edward Cabrera on the mound. MLB's pitching war leader has been great in his first two playoff starts. He has allowed three homers though, which is a surprise because nobody does a better job of keeping the ball in the ballpark than he does. Kevin Lux drops the ball here in the top of the first inning. That is going to go for a bloop single for the speedster Justin Crawford, the son of former Major League outfielder and all-star Carl Crawford. Bryce Harper strikes out as we go to the bottom of the first and we take a look at Walker Buehler. In Buehler's first two playoff games, well, I think you can call it Buehler's day off because he's been horrific. His numbers make Sandy Alcantara's playoff numbers look good. That's honestly impressive. The Phillies are 0-2 in the playoffs when Bueller pitches, but they're undefeated when he doesn't pitch. Luis Arise strikes out on the circle change. He went chasing on that one. Bo Bichette is up now. He's played pretty well in his first postseason run as a Marlin, but he strikes out on the slider. Let's go top two. The catcher and former Marlin, JT Realmuto, singles into left field. And the Phillies open up the inning with a base runner. They've got to get guys on and they've got to capitalize because, as we know, it's really hard against Edward Cabrera. 
Castellanos into foul territory. Good play by Brian De La Cruz, who has played surprisingly good defense in the outfield. How you Lee strikes out, and that'll wrap up the second. Good job from Edward Cabrera. He's looked good, as usual, so far. Nick Fortes up in the bottom of the second. He strikes out. The Marlins are having a lot of trouble putting the bat to the ball so far. Walker Bueller, who's been awful in his first two playoff starts, looks really good. Edward Cabrera also looks really good as he strikes out Bryson Stott, who goes down looking. Trey Turner, top of the order, back up, and he goes down on the low slider. This is another pitching duel, as we've seen throughout much of the playoffs. It's been all about the pitching. Justin Crawford now up. Cabrera looking to strike out the side. He does just that. Edward Cabrera, you are him. Three scoreless innings as we go to the bottom of the third. The Marlins don't even have a base runner yet. Here's Luis Robert, his first playoff at bat of the year. Goes down looking on the inside fastball. That's a... Tough pitch right there. It looked like it was out of the zone, but he does not get the call. Brian De La Cruz has really struggled throughout the playoffs, and his struggles continue as he goes down on the slider. Two away for Gavin Lux. The perfect game over for Bueller as he's shopping gap, looking for extra bases. That'll be a double. So the Marlins have a runner in scoring position. They've got one of their best clutch hitters, Luis Arise, up to the plate. As it looks like it's going to be a pitching duel, I don't think we're going to have a lot of runs today. So when you get opportunities, you got to take advantage. And unfortunately, the Marlins don't do that. Luis Arise grounds it out over to Reese Hoskins at first. And through three innings, we are scoreless into the fourth. Hoskins strikes out on the curveball. Another great pitch from Edward Cabrera. That'll bring up the catcher, JT Romuto. He lines it over to short. Bo Bichette bobbles it. Romuto's really fast for a catcher, but he's out at first. Back-to-back -back perfect innings for Edward Cabrera. The Phillies only with two hits so far. That's one more than the Marlins can say they had, though. Until now! Bo Bichette crushes it into left field. That one is gone! The Marlins on the board first here in Game 1 of the NLCS. Bo Bichette with his first homer of the playoffs, 106 off the bat. And Miami leads it 1-0. That'll bring up Nick Fortes now, 2-1. He gets a hanging pitch up and away. And how you Lee completely misplays it at third. They're going to rule that as a base hit. I think they should probably call it an E5. But, hey, it'll help Nick Fortes' stats. So that's cool. That'll bring up Jesus Sanchez, who's had some good moments throughout the playoffs. His fair share of ups and downs. But he goes down looking on the fastball. Good inning, though. The Marlins get on the board with a homer by Bo Bichette. And it is a 1-0 ball game. How you Lee hits this one high and deep in the left center. It goes off the wall. Chisholm gets to it quickly, but not before Lee makes it over to second with a double. So that'll put a runner in scoring position and a big opportunity for Bryson Stott here at the bottom of the order. He goes down on the sinker. That's now five scoreless innings for Edward Cabrera as he continues to dominate per usual. Brian De La Cruz takes a walk, first Marlins walk of the game. And that'll bring up Gavin Lux, who got a hit in his last at bat. He could certainly use another one. That's not what happens. It's actually a double play. Liner over to Hoskins, who tags the runner as it remains 1-0 through 5. Only six combined hits for the two teams. Trey Turner starts his off in the sixth. He goes down on the fastball. Cabrera showing no signs of slowing down, and I think I might have just jinxed him. Bryce Harper ties it up with a solo homer into the bullpen, and we are knotted up at one. That's his fourth homer of the playoffs. Harper has been a maniac here in October, per usual. Edward Cabrera has only allowed four runs in his three playoff starts. They've all been homers, and he only allowed nine in 33 regular season starts. Hoskins walks, Real Muto grounds it to third, and Luis Sarais makes the play. Cabrera's pitch count is starting to get higher, and when we kept him in for extra work during his previous outing, he got hurt. Now, that's more of a coincidence than anything. It's not like he hurt his arm. It was a line drive off his head. But still, when the Marlins overdo him, that sometimes backfires. To lead off the bottom of the six, Arise is going to have it caught by Brandon Marsh. What a play in left center field as Marsh makes an awesome defensive play. One of the better defensive center fielders in the game showing off his range for out number one. 
Walker Bueller, gotta commend him. He has continued to have an outstanding start, but he does allow another hit here to Bo Bichette, just the fourth hit of the game for the Marlins. And for Bo Bichette, that's his second of the game. The rest of the team only has two. So that'll bring up Jazz Chisholm now. Jazz has performed well in the playoffs, but he grounds it to first. Three, six, three, inning ending double play. And through six, we've got ourselves a nail biter tied at one here in South Beach. Cabrera will stay in the game here in the seventh inning as he allows a base hit to Nick Castellanos. Will the Marlins keep him in? He's at around 112-ish pitches. Or will they take him out? It looks like he will be removed from the game. Another phenomenal postseason outing for Edward Cabrera, who in his three playoff starts this year has been really good in all of them, only allowing one run so far in six innings. He'll be replaced by the lefty A.J. Puck. The Phillies have a couple lefties up pretty soon, so the Marlins are taking advantage at the matchups. It's first Brendan Marsh, who strikes out in the slider. How you Lee up now for the Phillies. He gets plunked. And so the Phillies have two runners aboard. Two away now for Trey Turner. What an opportunity for the all-star shortstop. He grounds it to third. Luis Arise slow to react. Backhanded throw is in time. They got him. Through the top of the seventh, this game remains scoreless at one. Bottom seven, it's Jesus Sanchez with a liner over to first. Hoskins makes the play. Quick one, two, three inning. Walker Bueller is through seven, only having allowed one run. How much longer do the Phillies keep him out there? His pitch count is starting to get quite high, too. Into the eighth now, Camilo Duvall is in for the Marlins. The all-star setup man has been quite good in the postseason, and he's coming off a great regular season as he strikes out Justin Crawford on the cutter for out number one. Two away now, it's Reese Hoskins, who's had some good defensive plays today, and he will hit the slider up the middle. Bo Bichette looks to make the play, and he will. Still tied at one. There has been virtually no offense other than a couple homers from Bichette and Harper. The Phillies will go to the bullpen now. It's Connor Brogdon who's into the game. He has not had a great playoff run, allowing three runs in a little over two innings. We'll see if he can rebound against a struggling Marlins lineup. Luis Robert starts off with a strikeout. He has been quiet here in his first game back. Yandy Diaz is up now as a pinch hitter. Coming off the bench for the struggling Brian De La Cruz. And he will take advantage. It looks like, actually, this might be a close play. And no, he is safe. So that'll be a base hit here for Yandy Diaz. He is a little bit slower, so the Marlins are going to bring out pinch runner Esteuri Ruiz. The Marlins have not had many base runners today, so the thought process here is if you get one, you got to try to score them. Ruiz steals second safely. And now the Marlins have one of their fastest players in scoring position with one away. Big opportunity here for Gavin Lux, who's hit the ball well in this game, but he strikes out on the circle change. So that'll bring up Luis Arise, who's had a few pretty big at-bats today. Hasn't really done anything with them as he's over 3. Grounder over to short. Turner makes the play. Throw to first in time through 8. We are still tied at 1. Will either team get some offense going to the ninth, or could we be going back into extras? Well, the Phillies certainly didn't. Camilo Duvall makes quick work as he retires the side, and now the Marlins heart the heart of the order, 2-3-4 up against the lefty Gregory Soto, who has not a lot of runs so far and a little bit under two postseason innings, but he's got to face off against Bichette, Chisholm, and Landry. We'll start with Bo Bichette, who draws a walk. Bo has had an awesome game today, his third time on base, and the winning run is aboard. That'll bring up Jazz Chisholm, who's already ahead 3-1, and he pops it up. Man, that was a good pitch to hit ahead of the count. And he does not capitalize. Unfortunate. So Chisholm is retired. And so that will bring us to Woody Landry, who still has only reached base once in the entire playoffs. He hits this one well in a right center field. And it is caught by Brandon Marsh for the second out. So the two lefties don't really do anything here. And so that'll bring up the catcher, Nick Fortes. He's one for three on the day. Count is full. And he strikes out on the circle change. We are going to extras. Nine innings, not enough. The Marlins don't get a walk-off here in the ninth, unlike their previous game to advance to the NLCS. As the closer, Devin Williams, is in for Miami. He's been good in the playoffs. Not a save opportunity, but the Marlins want their best reliever here in the game. How you least start to the walk. Stop now. Grounds it to Luis Arise. The Marlins playing heavily in. They're going to get the one out at first. 
Lee, though, is now in scoring position with one away for the top of the order. Trey Turner goes down in the corner. He's frustrated, and understandably so. That was a huge at bat. And so now there's two away, and a big opportunity for the Onion. Justin Crawford, the 2-2, swinging a miss on the screwball. Good pitch there by Devin Williams, and we will make it into the bottom of the 10th. Still tied at one. We'll see if the Marlins can walk it off here. So Carlos Rodriguez will come out of the bullpen. He's allowed one run in an inning and a third here in the playoffs as he'll face off against Luis Robert, his first playoff game of the year. And Robert skies this one in a right field. That ball's got some carry at the track, at the wall. It's gone! A walk-off home run in game one of the NLCS for Luis Robert. Welcome back to the lineup, buddy. Robert's first playoff game of the year with the Marlins. He walks it off here in extra innings, and it's the Marlins who take a 1-0 series lead in the NLCS. What a moment for the home crowd who packed this place and kept the noise going for the entire game. The Marlins are now three wins away from advancing to the World Series for the first time since 2003. This win, like many of our other postseason wins, was about the pitching. I get this Luis Robert walk-off home run is certainly the biggest moment of the game, and obviously he deserves a ton of credit, especially considering the guy has not been in a major league lineup in at least a month or two at this point. But it's the pitching who has carried the Marlins throughout the playoffs. Miami is 6-1 and one in the postseason, but they have not scored more than five runs in a playoff game. The pitching has been unbelievable. The Marlins are 3-0 when Edward Cabrera starts, and the bullpen has been unreal. The bullpen has been the MVP of this team through the postseason. These guys have been so consistent, so reliable, and today, that was exactly the case. When Edward Cabrera is on the mound, you can pencil it in as an L for the other team, and it's not just because Cabrera is so good, but the Marlins should have a lead by the time he's taken out of the game, and you know the bullpen is not going to blow it. Now, you got to give Walker Bueller a ton of credit. He was probably a little bit better than Edward Cabrera, if we're being completely honest. But the Phillies' bullpen led up first. Neither offense was very good. We've got to get more runners on base. This is not a sustainable way to win. But that's what I've said every other time our offense has struggled. And guess what? We keep finding ways to win, even when we don't hit the ball well. So now that'll bring us into game two. We can take a 2-0 series lead here, which would be a really big deal. We've got Sandy Alcantara on the mound. He's really struggled so far in the playoffs, and he's got to pick it up. Not to mention, he'll be going up against Zach Wheeler, who in 17 postseason innings has allowed one run. He has been as good as Walker Bueller was bad before the game one start where Bueller pitched seven innings of one run ball. So this is a really big game here. If the Marlins win, they will take a 2-0 series lead. They will be in clear control headed into the three road games in Philadelphia. But if the Phillies win it, they'll be completely back in the thick of things. It'll be 1-1. I don't want this to be an overly competitive series. I would love to see the Marlins try to finish these guys off as quick as possible. Because if this does get competitive, I think the Phillies have the veteran experience to where that may be able to overmatch the Marlins a little bit. Here's a look at your lineups, and here's a look at Sandy Alcantara, who has not been good in two postseason starts. The Marlins won both of those games, but it was not because of Sandy Alcantara. On the flip side, though, we know he's an absurdly talented pitcher, and he's got to get it together, right? Well, his day does not start off great. Trey Turner gets an early single. Part of the reason why Sandy has struggled is because early in innings, he's allowed too many base runners. So putting the ball on the ground and setting up double plays is exactly what he needs to do. Bryce Harper grounds into an inning-ending double play. The boys are celebrating. They're getting fired up. And it's only the first inning. I love the energy. Here's Zach Wheeler, who has been unreal for the Phillies so far in the playoffs. If the Marlins can barely hit off of a weak bullpen and a guy whose ERA was in the double digits, what are they going to do against Zach Wheeler? Well, here's Bo Bichette, who singles into center. Bo's coming off a big game one. He reached base three times. He had the homer, and he gets another hit here. That'll bring up Jazz Chisholm. He goes down looking. Absolutely should have swung at that pitch. What was he waiting for? Luis Robert moving up in the lineup after his big homer as he rips it up the middle for a base knock. So there's two runners on, two away, and a big opportunity for Woody Landry. 
Woody's playoff struggles has been very apparent. He has not gotten a hit since game one of the wild card round. That was Miami's first playoff game. This is their eighth. That's how long it's been since he's got on base, let alone gotten a hit until right now. Single into center. That'll score a run. It's 1-0. Finally, Woody Landry's first hit, and it's for his first time on base in seven games. It took a little while, but I'm glad to see him swinging the bat. Into the second inning, Reese Hoskins strikes out. That'll bring up Real Muto. Rips it down the line and fair for what should be a double. Luis Robert gets to it fairly quickly, but Real Muto is now in scoring position. We'll see if the Phillies can drive him in, put themselves on the board as Nick Castellanos hits it up the middle for a single. Run will look to score. He is safe. Castellanos advances over to second, and it's now tied at one. We're already getting way more offense than we did in the first game. So Castellanos is in scoring position. Now the Phillies could hypothetically take the lead. They would not, and we move into the bottom of the second. Jesus Sanchez will lead things off, and he'll lead them off strong with a single into center. The Marlins already have four hits, and they're coming off a game where I think they only had, what, six? That'll bring up Yandy Diaz now hitting 381 in the playoffs. Grounds it up the middle, didn't hit it hard enough, and that'll go for an inning-ending double play. Through two, it's been a pretty competitive ball game so far as we are tied at one. Bryson Stott leads off the third. He goes down on the 97-mile-an-hour fastball. That'll bring up Trey Turner, who strikes out on the 12-6. We just got to see Sandy get comfortable. I think all it's going to take is a few innings for him to really find a groove. He was trying to strike out the side, but Justin Crawford takes a walk. Now Bryce Harper gets a hit, and again, the Phillies are starting to pile on the base runners. There's a reason why Sandy Alcantara's postseason whip right now is over two. And compare that to a guy like Edward Cabrera, who's is barely at one. Grounder to second, Diaz makes the play. That'll wrap up the third. This feels similar to Sandy's other playoff games. He's not allowing a ton of runs early, but he's allowing a lot of base runners. And I feel like at some point, it's going to come back to bite him. Yandy Diaz with a single into center field. Okay, there's a base hit here to start the bottom of the third. We'll see if the Marlins can potentially take the lead as that'll bring up Jazz Chisholm with a full count. Up the middle, base hit. The Marlins have hit a lot of balls up the middle today. I feel like it's just a coincidence, but I feel like almost all their hits have been into direct straightaway center field. Luis Robert is up now, full count. He draws a walk. Coming off the game with his walk-off homer, he has not stopped the heat. He's reached base in his first two at-bats today. Bases are juiced for Woody Landry. He flies it into left. It is caught. Runner thinks about tagging up. He's actually going to head back to third, about a third of the way through, headed home. He thinks he would have been out. I kind of agree. I think that's the right call. So the bases are loaded, but the inning gets to stay alive, which I don't think would have been the case had the runner kept going. Now, it's not really going to matter as Nick Fortes grounds out to second. The Marlins leave him loaded. How many times have I said that in this series? At least, like, 50 we're still tied at one going into fourth. Both teams leaving a lot of base runners on. JT Realmuto strikes out. K number four for Alcantara. Nick Castellanos up the middle. Bichette nearly makes a great play on the ball, but he's unsuccessful. And that'll go as an infield single for Nick Castellanos, who is now two for two today. Runner looks to steal second. Slow jump by Castellanos, but Fortez also reacted late. And so the stolen base puts a runner in scoring position for Lee who goes down on the fastball. That was a pretty good inning from Sandy Alcantara. He allowed the one hit, but that was about it. Through four, he's only allowed one run. Not that it's been pretty, but he's doing his job. Brian De La Cruz with another single into center field. The Phillies might just be best suited to put their three outfielders all in center field based on how the Marlins are hitting it today. Diaz with a grounder over to short. Can the Phillies turn two? They do. Zach Wheeler's had a really similar game to Alcantara. He's allowed a lot of base runners, but the Marlins only have one run. He's doing his job. Let's move into the fifth. Bryson Stott hits it well into the gap. Big start to the inning for the Phillies as Stott looks to make it to second. Good defense by Luis Robert, who's nearly able to throw him out, but he's just not in time. And so Stott leads off the inning with a double. That'll bring up Trey Turner, who grounds it to third. Luis Arias way overthrows the first baseman, and that'll score a run. Was that Justin Fields dropping back to pass? My goodness, what a horrible throw. So since the throw by Luis Arias went out of the field of play, the one runner gets to go 
take an extra base while the runner at second gets to score. After the runner would advance to third, the Marlins will intentionally walk Bryce Harper. For one thing, Bryce Harper's scary. He's really good at hitting the ball. But now this sets up the opportunity for a double play or a ground ball, and it takes away a little bit from a sack fly opportunity. Or you can just strike out Reese Hoskins too. That, that works as well. JT Romuto now lines it to first. Woody Landry cannot make the catch, but he flips it over to Alcantara to get the out. So the Phillies score a run, an unearned run, but a run nonetheless. And so they lead it 2-1 to one as we go into the bottom of the fifth inning. Bo Bichette is up with one away for the Marlins. He homered back in game one. And Bo Bichette might have just did it again. This one is hit well in the left center field. It is out of here. Bo Bichette with his second homer in as many games. This one goes 423 feet, around 108 off the bat. And we are knotted up at two. Bo Bichette has looked unbelievable. So far here in the NLCS, he has dominated offensively in both games against the Philadelphia Phillies. He's taking command of the strike zone. He's hitting the ball well. It's been great to see. Jazz Chisholm takes a walk, so the Marlins have one of their speedsters aboard. That'll bring up Luis Robert, who's reached base on three consecutive plate appearances. Another one sounds pretty good here. Or instead, it's a liner for a double play. Good job by Hoskins to make the play and quickly tag the runner. So both teams score in the fifth. Bo Bichette with a solo homer as we are knotted up at two. Sandy Alcantara is at around 100 pitches, actually 111, as he walks Nick Castellanos. The leash for him was very short, to be specific, one base runner short. He's done after five. Two runs allowed, only one earned so far. His best playoff start, which doesn't really say much, but overall he pitched pretty well as Adonis Takadopoulos comes to replace him. And the Marlins start nearly with a double play. But the throw at second by Diaz is off the mark. The Marlins infield has got to do a better job of throwing the ball. How you Lee now rips it down the line. That'll go for an extra base hit. And now there's two runners in scoring position with just one away for the Phillies. Great opportunity for them to get this lead right back. Bryson Stott strikes out on the knuckleball. Takadopoulos is showing off his specialty. And now we've got one of the biggest at-bats of the series. Turner doesn't even swing the bat. So Takadopoulos makes it through the inning, and we remain tied at two. Good job by Adonis to get out of the jam. The Phillies make a pitching change as well. Zach Wheeler was not great, but he wasn't bad either. He'll be replaced by Griff McGarry. Woody Landry launches this ball into right field. Where has this guy been? A nuclear missile for Woody. His first home run of the playoffs, and the Marlins lead it 3-2. Big swing from Woody Landry, 422 feet, 108 off the bat. Woody Landry has more hits today than he did in the first seven playoff games combined. So Woody now has driven in two runs today, including a mammoth homer, and the Marlins lead it 3-2. But why stop there? Fortez with a liner in their left, and that one is going to go off the wall. I thought it had enough carry to make it over the fence. It just doesn't quite have enough. But it is still a double, and there's still nobody out. So there's still a great opportunity to add to this lead. Jesus Sanchez up the middle for a hit. If there was two outs, I think Fortez is sent. But since there's nobody out, the Marlins are going to hold them up at third. Runners on the corners and nobody out here for Brian De La Cruz. He struggled with runners on base here in the playoffs, but this time he comes up big. Single into left field. It's now 4-2. to two. A big start to the sixth inning for the Marlins, and there's still nobody out. One away now. Both runners in scoring position for Luis Arise. It's a fly out in the left. It is caught by Castellanos. Runner heads to the plate, and the throw is in time. They got him. Nick Castellanos with a rare, great defensive play as he guns down Jesus Sanchez trying to score off the sacrifice fly. Still a big inning, though, for the Marlins with a solo homer by Woody Landry and an RBI single by Brian De La Cruz. They lead it 4-2 going into the seventh. Now it's time for the bullpen to finish the job. Reynaldo Lopez comes into the game, and his day does not start well. Justin Crawford homers into the bullpen, and the Phillies cut the lead in half to one. So it looks like the Phillies are not going to roll over and die. Quick start to the inning for Crawford. Reese Hoskins goes down on the fastball. JT Romuto joins him. So Lopez makes it through the rest of the inning, but he does allow a homer, and the Phillies are now only down by one. 
Let's go into the bottom of the seventh. Connor Brogdon is in. He's allowed three runs in three and a third postseason innings as Bichette hits this one high and deep in the left field. That ball is out of here. Bo Bichette, you are him. That's his third homer of the NLCS. My God, is this guy on a tear right now. Holy cow. Bo Bichette might as well make a purchase here because he owns the Philadelphia Phillies so far here in the NLCS as it's 5-3. to three. Why stop now, though? Jazz Chisholm barely gets it off the ground, but he hits it so hard it goes over the fence. His fourth homer of the playoffs that leads the team, and it's now 6-3. That ball goes 110 off the bat. It had a launch angle of about 20. But because he hit the ball so hard, it's a liner that goes over the fence. Luis Robert does not keep the home run streak up. Instead, he grounds it to third. And right as Connor Brogdon, as soon as he's eligible to be taken out of the game, he will be. After allowing the two homers, he'll be replaced by the lefty Bailey Falter, making his first postseason appearance of the year. He'll face off against Fortes, who weakly grounds it up the middle. Turner looks to make the play. Going to be pretty close, and he does. Good inning, though, for the Marlins with back-to-back -back homers by Bo Bichette and Jazz Chisholm. Miami very clearly in the driver's seat with two to go. Dylan Tate on for the save as Brandon Marsh singles it into left with one away. There's a base runner. The Phillies got to get hot now or else they're going to go down 2-0. How you Lee is up for the Phillies. Up the middle, base hit. Okay, so the Phillies are getting base runners here, but they've got to capitalize. They've positioned themselves in an opportunity to where they can put themselves back in the game down by three. That starts with the nine hitter, Bryson Stott, who would be out, and then Trey Turner, who's going to join him with a fly out to left. It's caught by Robert, and Dylan Tate makes it out of the jam. The Marlins are looking good. They're up 6-3 to three as we go into the bottom of the eighth. Can the Marlins finish it off? Brian De La Cruz is up. He's had one of his better games of the playoffs as he gets his third hit of the day. De La Cruz has had his struggles, but he's had a really good performance in this one. And so the Marlins have another runner aboard. Let's see if the Marlins can drive him in as that'll bring up Luis Arise with two away. And it's a weak dribbler to first. Hoskins will tag the base. So Bailey Falter does a good job with some damage control as he's going to pad the bleeding a little bit. But it's still a three-point game, or I guess a three-run game. This is baseball. And Devin Williams is in for the save. He's three for three in save ops this year as he faces off against Justin Crawford, who flies it in the left. Luis Robert chases after it. He'll make the play. That's out number one. Two to go. Bryce Harper now. Draws a walk. Okay, there's a base runner. You can't allow too many of those. So Harper's on base now. That'll bring up Hoskins. As this one is on the ground, it could end it. Williams to Bichette to Landry. That's your ball game. The Marlins win game two of the NLCS by the final score of 6-3. to three. Don't look now, but the Miami Marlins are two wins away from advancing to the World Series. Two hard-fought wins here at home to kick off the series against the Phillies. These two games were not perfect, but we got the job done. Game one was about the pitching. Game two is about the offense. Six runs, four homers, 15 hits. By far the best offensive game the Marlins have had in the playoffs. The Phillies did a great job of getting base runners. Ten hits, four walks, but they could not capitalize. They left too many guys on base. That was their downfall. The pitching, especially the bullpen, was not great. Wheeler was okay, but the bullpen really struggled. We really picked it up once Zach Wheeler was out of the game. Bo Bichette was phenomenal. Three for four, two homers. Chisholm went deep. Landry went deep. He drove in two. De La Cruz was really good. Sandy had a strong outing, and the bullpen did a good enough job to finish off the game. So we win games one and two here at home. The series is far from over. We've got three road games now, but we're in a good position. In the next episode... We can advance to the World Series if we win both games. Now, that's easier said than done on the road. But hypothetically, our Marlins can advance to the Fall Classic. Can we get the job done, though? Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.